As all gamer boys and girls know, we don't take linear gameplay with kindness. Why? Because it's usually repetitive and simply boring. Gamers are pretty diverse. Each gamer has their own orientation and their own style. Some like to play spontaneously, some like to plan everything, and some are attracted to men. Linear gameplay is similar to the American states of Alabama in one main aspect. Retardation. Not necessarily mentally, but in terms of individual creativity. When something is linear, it has only one way. In games, that's usually the developer's way. If there's only a single way to progress and achieve an objective in a game, it has linear gameplay. For example, say you have an objective of finding and securing a prisoner in a high security military base. A heist like this in GTA has only one or two ways to be carried out, preset by the game. You can see how individual creativity is limited in linear gameplay. But why? Well, by limiting the player's options, the developers can better control the quality and ensure the player experience. Bugs and glitches are also retarded this way. Again, retarded as in limited or held back in terms of development. Now if you look at a game like Metal Gear Solid, freeing a prisoner would have a significantly different approach. There would be a few creative ways to go about the objective. You can be stealthy and sneak up on the enemies, making your way to the prisoner's cell. Or you can be bold and just kill everyone and everything till you reach and free the prisoner. These are just the general ways, but there are also many creative specifics that you have to choose from. If you want to be stealthy, a car would attract attention, so you're going to steal that. And you'd take a silenced pistol instead of an AK-47. You see how you're allowed to interact with the world through the versatile game mechanics and creatively accomplish your mission. Also, no one tells you how to accomplish it. Only you decide that. By offering creativity, not only your gameplay increases replayability too, which is how many different ways you can play the game, leading to less tedious and more variable gameplay experiences as you can replay missions in different ways each time. When you replay a mission in Metal Gear, it's almost never the same because of how many routes and styles you can achieve the mission through. In contrast, a game like GTA has some missions where you're guided through the strict system. You can save the prisoner only using the bus to get in and killing everyone. No matter how many times you repeat the mission, it's gonna be in that same pattern, using the bus to get into the prison, killing everyone, and leaving by an airplane. So there's not much non-linearity when it comes to choice of gameplay. Should all games incorporate non-linear gameplay? No, it depends on the genre of the game and the linearity of other game elements. Some genres like RPGs are more versatile and would be very tedious without non-linear gameplay. Some games focus on linear narrative, and linear gameplay goes better with that because it allows more developer control, which is needed to achieve a specific setting and feel. Some games may use both linear gameplay for storytelling and non-linear gameplay for multiplayer, for example. But what doesn't count as non-linear gameplay? Having an open world to run around between missions doesn't. That doesn't even count as gameplay. An open world would be considered level layout, and that's a different thing. Because remember, for it to be non-linear gameplay, there must be a variety of ways for the player to achieve an objective. An open world has no objective, so the gameplay needs to be linked to actual game completion for it to be gameplay in the first place, not just having the ability to torture and abuse NPCs however you want before you reach your destination. Level layout is the way of progression of levels in a game. The way you progress between the levels or missions in GTA, for example, is that you head towards one of the mission marks in the open world. Because you mostly cannot control which missions you want to play and in what order, the level layout in GTA is considered mostly linear. However, you can see now linear level layout in some Super Mario games, where you're allowed to choose between and even skip some levels. It may be a bit hard to differentiate between the non-linearity of gameplay, narrative, and level layout, but that's okay because there's not a very clear line on where the linearity and non-linearity stand apart, as they're very interconnected. However, let me remind you that, once again, linearity isn't that big of a deal when it comes to games. And my biggest evidence is that most gamers don't know much about it. A game can be linear or non-linear and still be very fun if a core mechanic of the game is entertaining. Linearity is just like a cool, out-of-the-box thought, but to be honest, it's pointless to think out-of-the-box and say these fancy algebra words if a game is simply boring in the end. Sometimes, even core mechanics are pointless if a game doesn't shine anywhere. Narrative doesn't matter if there is gameplay that outshines it, such as in competitive games. And at other times, level structure alone can give you hours of entertainment as you admire the beautiful polygons of a visually artistic game. Good music and sound engineering can also transform your life into a song of elated euphoria or maybe a melancholic depression, but hey, I'm already depressed, so as long as it makes me feel something, I'll take it.
There's no need for a million cool features and fancy words to make a game good. It can simply have anything that makes it unique and fun, and people will buy it. Ultimately, nothing matters except the gamer's entertainment. So whether you enjoy city skylines or cyberpunk, just have fun bro, no one cares.